because you are God. El Shaddai, Elion, Elohim. We worship you because known unto you are all your works from the foundation of the world. Father, you have never gathered a people together to waste their time. Thank you for gathering us together at this time to invest in our lives. We vow to give you all the glory and we believe we will not live here the same. Blessed be your name, Lord, in Jesus' precious name. Everybody expecting a turnaround encounter, give Jesus a clap and a shout of praise. And please be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to appreciate my Father in the Lord for the privilege to stand upon this exalted altar. I want to appreciate him for the privilege of fathering and mentoring that has brought us so far. Sir, I want to thank you because you gave us the opportunity to see light and in your light we saw very, very bright light. There are things that we will never have dared except that we saw it. Thank you for blazing the trail and we appreciate you. I want to appreciate our mother and the Lord for standing so strong with our father. Thank you for making it easy for him. We appreciate you, ma'am. Hallelujah. Some time ago, God gave me a song that is around this title. And I thought that before I step into the world, there is somebody here that that may be your story. Are you weighed down by battles in life? Are you thinking of quitting the race? There is no need to give up on your journey because I know my God will turn it around. Are you way down by battles in life? Are you thinking of quitting the race? There is no need to give up on your journey because I know my God will turn. I know my God will turn it around. I have seen. I have seen my God turn it around. There are so many, many. There are so many, many, many times in my life that I have seen my God turn it around. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know my God will turn. You suffered from disappointment. So Just keep holding on to the one who cannot disappoint. I know my God will turn it around. Have you suffered from disappointment? And some people.
Thank you, Father, for turning it around. I see a turnaround in your family, a turnaround in your marriage, a turnaround in your destiny, a turnaround around your life. In Jesus' name. Give the Lord a praise as you take your seat. Hallelujah. Amen. Very, very quickly, we shall be looking at engaging the world for turn around encounters. Engaging the world for turn encounters. In this session, we shall be looking at the turnaround power of the world. We shall also look at the various actions of the world that culminate in a turnaround. And then, we shall look at those activities that facilitate the ministry of the world. All on the Exploring Covenant platforms for supernatural turnaround. It is very clear from Scripture that the Word of God, in addition to the prayer platform we just listened to, is a major covenant platform for supernatural turnaround for two reasons. First, the word brings not just insight but impact that guarantees a turnaround. The word brings not just insight but impact that guarantees a turnaround. Second, the word brings not just revelation but what I call energization to guarantee a turnaround. Examples first, in Luke chapter 5, from verse 1 all the way to verse 5, 6, 7, Peter had toiled all night and he caught nothing. And when he encountered the world, he said, Master, I have toiled all night. I have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when he did so, he enclosed a great multitude of fishes until the net break. A turnaround happened instantly at the point of the word. Someone is here today. A turnaround is happening for you at this word point. Second, at the wedding in Cana of Galilee, when the wine was expired or finished, and there was the need, the wedding was almost about to be ruined, until Mary, the mother of Jesus, told them, in John chapter 2 and in verse 5, whatsoever he saith unto you, in other words, whatever word he shows you, run with that word and there shall be a turnaround. They ran with the word and there was a turnaround. Everyone that is at the verge of embarrassment right now, I announce to you the word is coming that will give you a turnaround. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thirdly, the beginning of the turnaround for the captivity of Israel in Babylon happened when Daniel understood by books. In Daniel chapter 9 and in verse 2, the captivity would have continued, but Daniel understood by books. What books? The book of the prophet Jeremiah, that the people of God were meant to stay in Babylon for 70 years. Jeremiah chapter 29 and in verse 10, that was where Daniel read and saw that the captivity, say for thus say the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good work toward you in causing you to return to this place. 70 years has expired and the captivity was not coming to an end until Daniel went into the book and saw what the schedule was and he engaged the altar of prayer like we just heard. And then the turnaround began. Beloved, captivity will continue until insight and light is accessed. A turnaround happened because someone stepped into the book and saw that a turnaround was long 
overdue. Now, what are the functions of the word that can bring a turn around? Number one, the word brings correction. The word brings correction. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 tells us that all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction for instruction in righteousness. The word brings correction. It causes you to make a turn. The word causes you to change your course of action. And beloved, don't forget this. Many times, it takes a turn aside to experience a turn around. Many times, it takes a changing of the course of action. In Exodus chapter 3 and in verse 3, when Moses saw what he never saw before, the Bible said, he said, I will now turn aside. When he turned aside, that was when there was a turnaround. For somebody here, God brought you here for a turn aside so that there can be a turnaround. If you believe that, say the Lord and say amen. amen. The word brings correction. Number two, the word brings direction. The word brings direction. Psalm 119 verse 105. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. It brings direction. And the light of direction guarantees effortless turnaround. Many of us have not left where we are because we don't know what to do. Every time you know what to do, you live where you are. Every time you know what to do, you live where you are. Direction is the cure for stagnation. Direction cures stagnation. So the word brings direction. Somebody's direction is coming in this season. Shout the Lord and say amen. Number three, the word brings restoration. In Luke chapter 15, a woman lost a coin. And the Bible said she lit the candle in verse 8. And then she, and she swept the house. And she, she found the piece of silver that was lost by the light. We just saw that the word is light unto our path. The word brings direction. There is nothing so lost that cannot be found by the light of the world. Nothing under heaven is so lost that cannot be found by the light of the world. The world brings restoration. Number three, number four now, the world brings illumination. The world brings illumination. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of man. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Listen to this. The light of the world disarms the force of the night. It doesn't matter the night you have experienced or are experiencing now. It takes the force of the word to disarm the light of the world, to disarm the force of the night. Night time always gives way to daylight by the power of the word. If there is anyone seated here today and the enemy brought you here in the night time season of your life, I am anointed to announce to you that that night is giving way now in the name of Jesus Christ. The word brings illumination. Number five, the word brings distinction. Arise, shine. For your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen. When light comes, people shine. The only reason why a person will not shine today is because he's lacking in light. In Matthew chapter 16 and in verse 16 to 17, when from verse 13, when Jesus asked the disciples, who do men say I am? When Peter, by light, recognized who the word was, he set him in a class of his own. He put him, he said, blessed are thou, Simon. I set you apart from your contemporaries. 
Listen, beloved brothers and sisters, to be lighted by the word is to be outstanding in the world. To be lighted by the word is to be outstanding in the world. Listen to this. No force of hell can keep a lighted man in obscurity. No force of hell for a city set on a hill cannot be hid. Everything that witchcraft has used to cover your life, that cover is destroyed now in the name of Jesus. Is destroyed by the light of the world in the name of Jesus. The, the word brings distinction. Number six, the word brings elevation. Galatians chapter 2 verse 2. Paul the apostle said, I went up by revelation. Listen, revelation is permanently the doorway to elevation. And listen to this. To be lighted is to be lifted and shifted higher in life. Show me a lighted man. I will show you a lifted man. Show me a lighted woman. I will show you a lifted woman. Is to be lifted and shifted higher in life. There are those who came in here. On your return back to where you came from, people will not recognize your level. They will not recognize your level. Say the loudest, amen. The major difference between Paul the Apostle, the late comer, who became the frontliner. Ay, 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 ay. Paul, the, Paul the Apostle was not there when Jesus walked on the earth. He didn't follow the apostles. As a matter of fact, the Holy Ghost had come and the Holy Ghost was operating. He was not aware yet. Paul was persecuting the church and fighting them. But suddenly, on the road to Damascus, he repented and joined the apostles late. Late comma became frontliner by virtue of light. It doesn't matter how late you came. It matters how lighted you are. There may be people in church for 20 years and they haven't seen anything. I heard from, from our father in the Lord some time ago where someone who had followed from Kaduna all the way and came all the way to Lagos and had been in church. One day he heard the message after almost 20 years. And he said, oh, I'm just understanding the tithe now. After so many years, it doesn't matter how late you came. It matters how lighted you are. Is God speaking to anybody here at all? Paul the apostle, by the power of light, Peter speaking said, some of the things that Paul speaks are things too hard to understand. In 2 Peter 3.15, that is Peter the master apostle was finding it difficult to understand the light of Paul. No wonder nobody could see Paul's bright light. Only him carried half of the New Testament and divided the rest for the eleven. I see somebody shifting forward. If you are that one, you are saying the loudest, amen. amen. Say the loudest, amen. amen. Hear this. Movement from the background to the forefront, from the pit to the top, happens at the frequency of light. From the background to the forefront, from the pit to the top, it happens. Whether the devil likes it or not, your level is shifting this time around. Your level is shifting this time around. You believe it. Say the loudest. Amen. The word brings elevation. Number seven, the word brings revolution. That was what happened to Peter where there was no fish in the river. And when a fisherman of the caliber of Peter tells you, I toiled all night and I have caught nothing. He had really toiled. He had exhausted his expertise. He was born into fishing. And they fish at night because the visibility of fishes are poor in the night. And he had done all that and there was no, no fish. Now what you do with a little body of water, they call it a lake, which means it was a restricted body of water. It means literally fishes were not there. You go a little bit and return back for another fishing season. 
But you remain there. When the world arrived, there was a forceful change. Suddenly, fishes began to announce to themselves from the Mississippi River to the Ohio River to the Benue River to the Niger River. Let us head to Gennesaret. There is a revival going on there. And there was suddenly a forceful change. I don't know who God is speaking to here today, but a forceful change is happening in your life. A revolution is a drastic change of story. A very drastic change of story. That is what the word does. Number eight, the word, and then when the word comes, of course, the world must turn. Number eight, we have seen that severally. The word brings purification. It brings purification. Psalm 119 verse 8. The Bible said, wherewithal shall. Psalm 119 verse 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? He said, by taking heed dear to, according to. To your word. How can a man cleanse his way? And then in verse 11 he said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. In John chapter 15 verse 3, he said you are clean. You are clean by the words I have spoken to you. So the, 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 the word brings sanctification. It brings purification that can guarantee a change of story. It was D.L. Moody who said sin will keep you from the Bible. And the Bible will keep you from sin if you study it very well. Listen, a change of character will ultimately culminate in a change of destiny. When character changes, destiny must turn. That is happening to somebody here. Number nine, the word brings impartation. Impartation of spiritual firepower. Impartation. He says in Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2, And the Spirit entered into me when he spake to me. In John chapter 6 verse 63, It is the Spirit that quickened it. The flesh profited nothing. He said the words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. In Luke chapter 4 verse 32, the Bible said his word was with power. His word was with power. When the word comes, power comes. In the same way that electric cables conduct electric energy, in that same way, the Word of God carries divine energy. And we just heard, when your power is small, you faint in battle. But when power comes, when fire comes, when energy comes, Jeremiah said in Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 9, he said his word was like fire shut up in my bones. When that fire comes... When that power comes, who no know must know. <laughs> hey! I speak to somebody here right now. By the time this shiloh is over, you are returning with a heavier power. You are returning with higher fire. You are returning with higher force. You believe it, say the loudest, amen. Job said, how possible are right words. Job chapter 6 and in verse 25. And number 10, the word brings liberation. The word brings liberation. In Psalm 105, verse 17 all the way to verse 19, he sent a man before them. Even Joseph, who was sold for a servant, the Bible said, whose feet they hurt with fetters. He was laid in iron until the time his word came. The word of the Lord tried him. And the king sent and loosed him. When your word comes, your chain breaks. It is not possible for the chain to be in place when the word has arrived. The king sent and loosed him. When your word comes, your chain breaks. When your word comes, your world changes. The Bible said in Psalm 107 verse 20, he sent forth his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Psalm, John chapter 8 verse 32, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And what is the truth? John 17, 17, thy word is truth. Freedom is guaranteed when the word arrives. Revelation guarantees liberation. Somebody say aloud, loud amen. One day, I sat in the office 
many years ago. And they brought a young man. This young man was mad. They tied his hand with a chain and locked the chain with four padlocks. About four people stood around him and they could not hold him. And the mother stood by crying, he is my only son. Now I looked at him on the spot and I looked at the people holding him and I said, I said lose him. They looked at me and said, what are you talking about? First I said, leave him. They looked at themselves and said, leave who? The person that is struggling and we can't hold, leave him. And they thought to themselves, well, if it pounces on all of us, you two, you are here. <laughs> so they left him. And then I said, lose him. They looked at themselves again, lose who? All this while we haven't prayed any prayer yet. Lose him. So they, lose, they, they unlock the first padlock, second padlock, third padlock, fourth padlock. And unwound the chain. His hand was already bleeding. I looked at him. I said, sorry. He said, thank you, sir. I said to him, I said, go on your knees. He went on his knees. I said, say after me, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I led him in the sinner's prayer. And I said, and said say after me, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I am not mad. I am not mad. I cannot be mad. I cannot be mad. I said, so stand up. You are not mad. Mother, carry your son. So, and they, they were going normal. Our pastor following me said, excuse me, sir, what just happened? I said, I just came out of the office. I was feasting on a firewood. I was feasting on Luke 10, 16. He said, he that heareth you, heareth me. He that, he that heareth you, heareth me. And he that despiseth you, despiseth me. And he that despiseth me, despiseth him that sent me. In my mind, I said, his voice is inside my voice. So when I say lose him, the devil heard him. Ay, 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 ay. When I said, leave him, the devil had him. I said, he that despised me, despised you. To me it meant, any devil that cannot refuse my utterance, cannot reject your own. And that guy was loosed on the spot by the fire of fresh light. I speak to somebody here today. The fresh light coming your way is setting your generation free. One day, I stepped into our healing and deliverance service because our papa said, examples communicate principles. And then I was feasting from Acts chapter 5 from verse 13, 14 to all the way to verse 16 that, Paul, uh, that, that Peter, uh, believers were the more added to the Lord, both mothers of men and women. And then, and then they brought sick people to the streets and couches and so on. And the shadow of Peter overshadowed them. I said, my God, this man just passed, blinded eyes open. He just passed, deaf ears open. He just passed. People jumped. No screaming. I was very angry. I said, well, why have I been disturbing my life? So I went with that anger straight to the altar. And I carried the microphone. And I said, as we've just came now, sicknesses have disappeared. Check yourself. If you are healed, come out. They trooped out like a crusade altar call. I said, go back to your city. Do you hear what I said? I said, if you, are, you were sick before you came here, now you are no longer sick, come out. They trooped out a mass. Wow. If we were to take the testimony, it continued end endlessly. What happened to you? I came with cancer, it has disappeared. What about you? My eyes just opened. What? I prophesy upon you freshness of light, freshness of light, freshness of light. In the name of Jesus. Take your seat. My time is running out. One of our children was born. And the pediatrician told my wife that the child had a congenital malformation. I'm a medical doctor by his grace and my wife too. We understood exactly what he said. 
It was a major organ defect that will threaten life, that will cause failure to thrive, that will cause everything. And when I was told, I told them, I said, every good and perfect gift, according to James chapter 1, verse 17, cometh from above, from the Father of light, with whom there is no variableness, no shadow of turning. And then Psalm 127, verse, verse 3 said, that the children are the heritage of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is his reward. If God is the giver of this gift, God cannot give what is imperfect. The devil does not have a child to give. God has given this child this diagnosis is rubbish, hogwash, baldadash. is inconsequential, remotely disconnected. The first day of that diagnosis was the last day. It was never cited forever. Child is studying medicine today without a trace of that devil by the power of light. I prophesy to you today, the light that is coming is changing your story right now. In the name of Jesus. Take your seat quickly. What do we do? In the next few minutes, what do we do to experience turnaround light from the world? Number one, possess meekness. The Bible said, Lay aside every superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word of God. James chapter 1 verse 21. Beloved, hear this. Arrogance is the foundation for ignorance. Anyone who is arrogant towards God must be ignorant in life. If God can't reach you because of pride, he can't teach you his light. The meek will he guide in judgment. Psalm 25 verse 9. The meek will he teach in the way he shall choose. Number two. Walk in uprightness. Lay aside every filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. Filthiness must be laid aside if you are to lay hold on insight. Lay it aside. You know that light can never be brilliant in the presence of garbage. It will never, you will always get smoke. Walk in uprightness. Number three, function in excitement. I rejoice at your word as one who found great spoil. Psalm 119 verse 162. If the word is not your excitement, it can never be your enlightenment. I rejoice at your word. Therefore with joy shall you draw waters from the wells of salvation. Isaiah chapter 12 and in verse 3. Jeremiah chapter 15 verse 16, Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and thy words was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart, for I am called by thy name. Function in excitement. Number four, pray for light and insight. Pray. You can pray for light. Psalm 119 verse 18, Open my eyes that I may behold wonders out of your book. Father, show me what I haven't seen before. And Psalm 43, verse 3. Oh, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me into your holy hill. Send me light. Send me light. Pray for light. Pray for insight. Number four, number five. Make enquiry as you study. He says, stand in the ways. What is the way? The word. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. John chapter 14, verse 6. Jeremiah 6, 16. Stand in the ways. While you are inside the middle of the world. Lord, what are you saying? What are you showing? Is there something you want me to hear now? Or to see now? I am not seeing. Make inquiry as you study. Number six. Possess the attitude of expectancy. Don't just step into the world for religion. Have magnetic expectancy. He said, I will stand upon my watch and I will watch to see what he will say. I am not just here carelessly. I am watching as a hunter to see what he will say. Be on the lookout because what you don't look out for, you never locate in life. Number seven, document what you see. Write the vision. Make it plain. It's in Revelation chapter 1 verse 11. What thou seest, write in a book. I want to say this and this is from my experience. When you pen the light, you pull more light. It is confirmed. He said in Mark chapter 4 verse 24 in the Amplified Version. He said the measure of attention 
take it what you hear. With what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you, and unto you that hear shall more be given. He said, be careful what you are hearing. The measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you. When you show God that you value what he is showing you by penning it down and documentation, then he gives you more. Number eight, be desperate. Possess desperation. Then shall we know if we follow on to know. Hosea chapter 6 verse 3. Then shall we know if we follow on to know. Desperation activates revelation. You desperately look for the word. Thy words we have found because I was looking for it. Number nine, engage the spirit. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. It has not entered the heart of man. The thing the spirit has revealed to us prepared for them, the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them to us by his spirit. There are things that the spirit will show. You know, the spirit of God is the spirit of wisdom and revelation. According to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 to 18. The spirit of God is a spirit of revelation. The spirit of God networks scriptures. He networks the most relevant scriptures to your situation Per time. John chapter 16 verse 13, the spirit of truth guides us into all truth. How be it when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak and he will show you things to come. Engage the spirit, praying aggressively in tongues as you study. Praying in tongues and asking questions. Singing in the spirit, asking the spirit to lead you. Number 10, engage the blood mystery. Engage the blood mystery, the mystery of the communion. In Luke chapter 24 and in verse 30 and 31, the Bible said that the eyes of, and it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and break and gave them. And then their eyes were open and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. You see, their eyes open as he broke bread with them. Many of us take communion religiously and you take it on yourself. But there are times where if you, if you get a naughty scripture, you can tear it open by the mystery of the blood. That was what happened in Revelation chapter 5 and in verse 1, where the book was sealed and no one was found worthy to open. But the lamb that had been slain by the virtue of being slain, by the blood with which he was slain, he took the book, loosed the seals, and opened the seven seals thereof. Finally, align with the ministry of anointed teachers. Align. Philip said, to the centurion, understandest thou what thou readest? He said, how can I accept one? Teach me. Acts 8, 31. Daniel 9, 2. Daniel understood by studying the prophet Jeremiah. And by studying the prophet Jeremiah, he saw light he never saw before. It's a new day for somebody. Who is the person about to experience a turnaround? Stand on your feet with a shout of praise. A louder shout of praise. In Jesus' precious name, thank you, Father, for your word. We give you the praise and the honor for the mystery of the turnaround. Your name be glorified in Jesus' precious name. Give the King of Kings a bigger clap and a louder shout of praise as you take your seat.